Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Not Me and today we're going to start the foot. Let's talk about the articulated foot. Now what does articulated foot mean? Basically it talks about the bones and how the various bones are formed with joints. The foot is basically a very complex structure. And we will begin from the very base of the foot, which is the bones of the foot. All right. So what are the bones of the foot? First, we have a group of tarsal bones, just like your uh, upper limb. We had the carpal bones. So we have the tarsal bones, which are very important that we'll talk about today very uh, soon. And then we, then we have the metatarsal group, which lies distal to the tarsals. Then we have the phalanges. All right. Let's talk about the tarsal bones first. These are seven in number arranged in two rows, the proximal row and the distal row. All right. I hope you can see. The proximal row consists of the two major bones that are the talus bone, which is a wedge-shaped bone. Now this is going to form the ankle joint, if you remember. And just beneath the talus is your calcaneus bone, which forms the prominence of the heel. The distal row consists of the medial, intermediate, lateral, cuneiform bones, and most laterally, a separate bone called the cuboid bone. Interposed between the proximal and the distal row lies your navicular bone, more on the medial side, as you can see. We uh, check the medial side by looking at the big toe. So this is the navicular bone. So overall, we've achieved an understanding of the arrangement of the tarsal bones. Now let's talk about the individual tarsal bones separately. First, let's talk about the talus bone. The word talus means wedge-shaped. So it is wedge shaped and it basically has a head, a neck and a body. The head is going to be articulating as you can see with the navicular bone. Restricted part known as the neck. And then finally we have the body. The body consists of an upper surface known as the trochlear surface responsible for forming the ankle joint. Then we have an inferior surface. The inferior surface is obviously going to be articulating with this calcaneus bone. As you can see, this is the inferior surface. And then we have the medial surface and the lateral surface. The medial surface you will see will be there will be a comma shaped facet, while in the lateral surface there will be a triangular facet. So that is how you can tell the medial and lateral part. Overall, the head is directed forwards, obviously because it has to articulate with the bone in front, the navicular, and the upper part is known as the trochlear surface. The inferior surface is going to form the ankle joint by articulating with the tibia's uh, in inferior surface. The medial malleolus articulates with the medial side on this comma-shaped articular facet and the lateral surface is for the articulation with the lateral malleolus. And finally, the inferior surface that articulates with the calcaneus bone. And then talus has a posterior process which has medial and lateral tubercles on it. Overall, the talus is devoid of any muscular attachments. Mostly ligaments are attached to it. And then it has an inferior surface, which is obviously articulating with the calcaneum. In the inferior surface of the talus, there is something very important that I need to tell you. In the inferior surface, since I cannot show you in this because the inferior surface is covered, the medial part of the inferior surface of the talus is grooved. So let's suppose this is the talus. It's going to be grooved in its medial part. Other part will be mostly flat. Okay. In the medial part, it has this groove, all right? This groove is known as the sulcus talli. What is the significance of this groove? I will tell you when we talk about the calcaneum bone. Now let's move on and talk about the heel bone or the calcaneus bone. Now calcaneus is a lot more irregular than the talus and also it's the largest tarsal bone, all right? It is basically forming your prominence of the heel over here and tendocalcaneus is also attached to it. The calcaneum bone has multiple surfaces. The anterior surface, if you can see and appreciate that anterior surface is responsible for articulating with this bone. If you remember, this is the most lateral bone of the distal row called the cuboid. So the anterior surface of the calcaneum will articulate with the cuboid. Then it has a lateral surface, a medial surface, a inferior surface, a posterior surface, an upper surface, and that's all. The anterior surface is going to articulate with the cuboid. The posterior surface is going to be a bare attachment of the tendocalcaneus and the plantaris. The lateral surface has a tubercle on it. 
This tubercle is known as the peroneal tubercle or the peroneal trochlea. This is important because above this tubercle passes the tendon of peroneus brevis while below it the tendon of peroneus longus passes. Itself it gives attachment to the inferior peroneal retinaculum. And then we have the inferior surface. If you can see in the inferior surface, there are two tubercles, the medial and the lateral tubercle and an anterior tubercle. In the medial surface of the calcaneus, now this is um, mostly concave. The medial surface of the calcaneum has concavity, which is accentuated in its upper part. Now hear this very carefully. The medial surface of the calcaneum is concave and this concavity is accentuated or you can say made prominent in its upper part and forms a shelf-like projection called the sustentaculum talli. Sustentaculum talli. So once again, the medial surface of your calcaneum is concave. The concavity is accentuated on the upper part where it forms a shelf-like projection known as the sustentaculum talli. Just on the superior surface above the sustentaculum talli, there is going to be articulation with the talus. Now what happens here, getting back to what I taught you before, in the upper part of the calcaneum, right over here, also it has a groove just like that. The calcaneum also has a groove on its upper part. This is known as the sulcus calcanei. These two grooves enclose this space, which is known as the sinus tarsi. So the space you can observe over here, this is the space. The, this is one groove, this is the sulcus talli and the below it is the sulcus calcani. And this space they are enclosing, they're not completely, you can say, stuck to each other or articulated. They're forming a space. This is known as a sinus tarsi. So the calcaneus bears a lot of muscular attachments. Most important is the tendocalcaneus attaching to the posterior surface with the plantaris, of, of course. Uh, medial lateral tubercle are giving various abductors their origins and uh, many ligaments are attached to, to the calcaneus. Let's move on and talk about the other bones. This is the navicular bone. The navicular bone in its medial part has this projection called the navicular tuberosity. And then we have the medial, intermediate and uh, lateral cuneiform bones, the cuboid bone, which has to form a joint posteriorly with the calcaneum bone, as you can see. The cuboid bone also has a you can say it's, it its inferior surface is grooved, all right? So this groove is going to be converted into a tunnel by the long plantar ligament for the passage of peroneus longus tendon. Moving on, after the tarsal bone come your first, second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal bones. Of all of these metatarsal bone, the first metatarsal bone is the shortest and thickest. These are the phalanges. Now, an important clinical related to the talus bone is that forced dor dorsiflexion causes the fracture of the talus bone. Where does it cause the fracture? On the neck of the talus bone. And because the blood vessels travel from the body all the way till the head, if the neck is fractured, the head won't get the blood supply. Hence, avascular necrosis of the head is a complication of this fracture. Then we have another fracture of the calcaneus bone, which usually occurs when there's forced inversion. If there's forced inversion, the sustentaculum telli gets fractured. Then we have uh, the second, third, and fourth metatarsal. So they usually undergo fracture of their shafts, known as the march fracture. In mostly the policemen or the soldiers, because those people march a lot, so they mostly get fractures on these metatarsals. Bursas can form uh, due to ill-fitting shoes on your foot in various areas. One of them is behind the tendocalcaneus, and one of them is a bunion. What is a bunion? It is a bursa. Bursa we have, we've already talked cushion like. Uh, tissues that form uh, just medial to the head of the first metatarsal. This is known as a bunion and usually uh, presents as a swelling over here on, on your foot and it's usually due to ill-fitting shoes. So now we've talked about the entire bones of the foot. Let's move on and talk about the joints of the foot.